Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Now I would like to point out that even though this is a hobby and you can do some things in, in informal ways, the kind of thing I'm going to talk to you about today, which is electrical safety, is no nonsense, very, very important. It is possible to kill yourself with uh, your radio or putting up an antenna and yes it does happen every year or two we read in QST about some poor schmuck who was putting up an antenna and it fell into the power lines. Don't let that be you. So talking about electrical safety um, it may seem like a dry subject but better dry than dead okay so pay attention to what's going on here. Now they talk about being able to withstand about 30 volts uh, DC uh, without uh, any kind of uh, damage. Uh, that's with dry skin. Okay, you wet the skin, you might get something more into it. If current only goes through your foot, from one side of the foot to the other, it's not going to affect you nearly as much as current going, say, from arm to arm, because that comes near where your heart is. Uh, generally, when we work on uh, equipment that uses 12 volts, we're okay, but that's not always true. For example, I just acquired a Yesu FT-101B, which is a 35-year-old uh, HF transceiver. It runs on 12 volts, but it has a multivibrator circuit in it to create this 600 volts DC for the plate voltage for some tubes that are inside the radio. And <clears throat> so you do have to be careful what you're doing, what you're touching. It's the current that kills. And if you've got high resistance, there will be low current. Uh, one thing you can do when operating um, on things that may have high voltages is keep one uh, hand in a pocket. That way it can't go right through your heart like that. Um, make sure that you're insulated. Uh, just be careful working around high voltage. Um, in fact, if you can, it's a very good idea when working around high voltage, which includes what comes out of the wall. That's over 30 volts, it's 120. Uh, is have a spotter, somebody there, a safety observer, who if something goes wrong can unplug it, uh, or if nothing else, call the authorities. Uh, if you see somebody who's down because of a shock, do not touch them until you are certain that the source of the electrical energy that is has taken them down has been removed. For example, if someone has fallen down and they're laying on top of a power line that has fallen down, do not touch them. You could get shocked and killed yourself. Call the authorities. Um, or if you've had the training, you might be able to uh, make things better. But don't grab hold of the person's foot and drag because now you're part of the circuit. Now, storage batteries are interesting, like car batteries. They've got the two terminals sticking up. One is uh, zero volts, the other is 12 volts. Um, be very careful with these. If you were to drop a wrench and it contacts both terminals of a storage battery, there's nothing to limit the current. And storage batteries hold a lot of energy and it can be released all at once. And it will actually melt the wrench. Don't try this. Don't try this. Because the wrench then explodes and showers hot metal everywhere. So when you have a storage battery like you've got say one under your desk that you're using to power your station, uh, make sure that the hydrogen is vented and also make sure that it is covered so nothing can accidentally drop on top of it. Hey, now uh, one thing that we need to do when we're talking about alternating current from the wall is proper grounding of electrical equipment. All newer equipment uh, comes with three-prong cords. Uh, if you have older equipment, you should very seriously think about modifying it so that it is a three-prong cord so you can get it properly grounded. Uh, put in a, a GFI outlet, a ground fault indicator or ground fault uh, interrupter in the circuit 
And that way, if you're touching something that's uh, hot and you touch ground, the uh, ground fault interrupter will note that there's current flowing in the ground line and turn the circuit off. And so that might be something you consider for uh, the, the rig. Now, let's talk about RF burns. Uh, radio frequency energy can shock just as much as uh, uh, the AC out of the lines. And in particular, I want to mention, uh, I didn't see it in the manual, if you have a dipole antenna, the impedance in the middle is 50 ohms, but the impedance out at the edges goes up near infinity. And uh, the impedance at the ends of the dipoles can be very, very high. And so the currents are low, but the voltage is very high. In fact, it can be thousands of volts RF, it, just from your little 100 watt transmitter. So, when you are working on your antennas, cut the power, disconnect the antenna line before going up and working on it. Because if you touch the end of a dipole while the radio is operating, you could be in for a bad shock. Now let's talk a little bit about lightning. Uh, it's not a question of if your station will be hit by lightning, it's when. It, it will happen, and yes, I have had lightning hit my station. Um, there are lightning arresters that you can get. Uh, they're not cheap. Uh, what you're looking at right now is a picture of a couple lightning arresters that I have hooked in uh, to my uh, VHF antennas. Uh, what these will do is, when there's a nearby strike, there can be a lot of energy still induced in your antenna and the lightning arrestor can stop that. Now, a direct strike, there's not really much that will protect your equipment unless you've actually physically disconnected the antenna and pushed it away from the radio. Uh, at the time I was hit by lightning, I did have my radio disconnected. In fact, I had it completely disconnected. I had it um, disconnected from everything and away from the equipment. The lightning hit, it blew out a power supply, it arced over the plates and the capacitor in the tuner, and it blew out uh, the um, AEA PK232 packet uh, modem that I had. Um, but the rig was not touched. The rig's the really expensive part, so uh, just uh, beware. I might point out while we're talking about lightning that if you have a handheld and you've got a J-pole on the roof and you have uh, coax between that and your handheld, you may have a problem because uh, when there's high winds, the high winds will actually cause a static charge to build up on that J-pole and that could fry your front end and I have had that happen to me. So what you need to do is you have your J-pole grounded. A wire runs to ground somewhere, okay, so that charge can bleed off. And the other thing that you ought to think about doing is when you're not using that handheld to disconnect it from uh, the antenna. So there you have it. Electrical safety, extremely important can't be overemphasized. Be safe. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio and I urge you to join even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.